Okay, let's have a look at what multiplication is. Earlier on, we talked about addition and subtraction, and we just checked that you knew what those meant, adding up and taking away. Do yes. you remember? Yeah. So you're used to seeing um, things like this. This might be a problem you're given. Six plus five equals, and you'd be asked to add those two numbers together, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. Good. And you'd know how to do that? Eleven. Yeah. Six plus five would give you eleven, wouldn't it? Yeah. Good. And what if it was, let's say, five plus six? Eleven. It would be just the same. It's the same, even if it's swapped. Well done. That's the sort of thing you need to remember. It doesn't matter with addition which way they're round. Uh, six plus five is going to be the same as five plus <laughs> six. It gives you the same answer, eleven in both cases. Yes. Yeah. Good. Now, that's called an addition problem because you've got that little plus sign in the middle. Yeah. Okay? And if that plus sign was replaced with a minus sign, it changes it from a, an addition problem to a subtraction problem, a taking away problem. So, so if you had six... It would be six take away five instead. Six take away five. How much would that give you? That would be one. One. Okay, so six take away five would be one. That's subtraction problems and addition problems. When we have multiplication problems, we just change that sign once again. And instead of putting a plus or a minus, we put something that looks like an X. And that means multiply. So we might have a problem like six times five or five times six. And let's see what they mean. Now let's have a look at your hands. How many fingers have you got on this hand? Five. You got five there, and how many on this hand? Five. Good. And ten. That's ten fingers in total, is it? That's good. Let's have a look. Mishi, he's got five fingers on this hand and five fingers on that hand as well. And so have I. I've got five fingers on this hand and five fingers on this hand. So let's see. How many hands do we have all together? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well done. We've got six hands. And on each of those hands... We have how many fingers? Five each. Okay, so you've got five each. So this would be an example of six times five. We've got six hands, yeah. and each hand has five fingers on it. Yeah. So we've got five fingers mm -hmm. six times over. Yeah. Yeah? <clears throat> now, if I was to say, can you count up all the fingers? One, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Well done. So we've got 30 fingers in all. Six hands with five fingers each. Six times five gives us 30. And that's known as a multiplication problem. Now, what we're going to be learning to do is to find the answer to problems like that without having to count through all of the individual fingers. So let's have a look and see what happens if, instead of doing 6 times 5, yeah. we do 5 times 6. Now, how many legs does an insect have? Six. Yes, you're right. Six legs on an insect. Let's, let's, draw, a little, let's draw a little bug here with six legs. <laughs> have, you, have you ever played Beetle Drive? Oh, no. no. Oh, yes, I have. You have. Lovely. So here we've got five beetles, and each beetle has six legs. Yeah. Earlier on, we said we've got six hands, and each hand has five fingers. Yeah. So that was five fingers six times over. Six times five. This time, we've got five beetles, and each one has six legs. So we have six five times or five times six can we count up these beetles legs karen one two three four 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Thirty. So we came to the exact same number there. Wonderful. Well done. So earlier on we looked at six times five with the six hands and five fingers each, and we found out there were thirty fingers. This time we've done five beetles with six legs each, and found that they've got thirty, thirty legs. So five times six and six times five both give you the same number. So just like addition. It doesn't matter which way round these problems are presented. If you've got six times five, it's going to be the same as five times six. Okay. Good. That's what multiplication is. It's taking that type of counting and saying, well, if I can know how to deal with the six and the five and somehow join them together to come up with the answer thirty quicker. Than counting up all of those beetles' legs or all of our fingers, if I can find a quicker way to get to the answer, then I've learned how to multiply, and that's what you're learning about on this course. Now, when people start learning about multiplication, they come across something known as the multiplication table. Oh yes, I've done that before. Okay, you remember, and、um, and sometimes people talk about multiplication tables as if there's more than one. And、there's two ways of looking at this. Here we have what you would call the multiplication table, and if you look, you've got this big grid. I've got the numbers from one to twelve along the top here, and the numbers from one to twelve down the left-hand side here. And what、well, do you remember earlier on? We looked at five times six. Yeah. Yes. Then. What you can do is you look at the five along the top here, yes, and the six down the left-hand side, and then have a look at where those two intersect, where they join. Bring you to thirty. The six. That's right. To the five comes down, and the six goes across, and we reach the answer thirty. Yeah. Good. And then let's just try it the other way round. If I went down the six column, but along the five row where they intersect, I get to thirty. Thirty as well. So you can see thirty is in both of those places, and this multiplication table can be used for looking up answers to multiplication problems. In this case, up to twelve times twelve. Yes.、Mm -hmm. Yep. Now that's what people call the multiplication table, and it can go bigger than that. So that you you don't have to stop at the number twelve. You could go on to the number twenty, or the number a hundred, or even further. And the multiplication table would just keep getting bigger and bigger. And when people refer to multiplication tables, what they mean then is stuff like this. Here's what we call the six times table. So we got one times six, and the answer one times six is six. Two times six is twelve. Three times six is eighteen. Four times six is twenty-four. So that's A times table that just works on problems that are something times six, and you'd have that alongside, for example, here the seven times table. One times seven is seven. Two times seven is fourteen. And here's an eight times table. One times eight is eight. Two times eight is sixteen, and so on. And these are the answers that you'll see looking down. These columns here, so the six times table answers are shown here. One times six is six. Two times six is twelve. Three times six is eighteen. That's it. So that table is all in that column there, and the seven times table answers are all in that column, and the eight times table answers are all in that column. That's why sometimes people would say, "Have you learned your times tables?" Or they might say, "Have you learned the times table?" Or multiplication table. Yeah. So you can call these times tables or multiplication tables. They both basically mean the same thing. Yes. That's what tables are. Now, the way that most people go about learning multiplication is to try and memorize all of these answers. They try to remember 
the multiplication table or to remember individual multiplication tables. That must be hard. <laughs> yes, I, I think it is for a lot of people. Uh, and in fact, I think it's one of the things that really puts some children off of doing math altogether. Because just like now, you've learned to add up and you've learned to take away. Yeah. You didn't memorise a whole block of answers like this, did you? Mm -mm. You weren't given an addition table to memorise or a subtraction table. You work it out in your head. When I said to you, what is six, take away five? You imagine something like six eggs in a box and taking five eggs away and you see the one that's left. Yeah. So you're, you're actually doing subtraction in your head. You're not thinking, oh, what, what did the table look like and what was the answer that was in the place of six take away five? Mm. But when people try to memorise all these answers, there's a lot of answers there to remember. Yeah. And that can be a bit worrying. If I was to put, if I was to put 20 things on a tray and ask you to remember those 20 things and cover them up and take it away and then ask you, what were those 20 things? Would you struggle? Yes. yes. You would. And what we've got here is 144 different things on a table. So asking you to learn all 144 of those that's things, hard. that is quite hard. Mm -hmm. And that's why very often it can take children two, three, four years even sometimes at school to get through the process of learning, memorising these tables. Yeah? So mental multiplication is where you work out multiplication answers in your head but without doing it from memorization. Yeah. Just like we talked about with that subtraction problem earlier, six take away five, and you have a process in your mind where you can get to the answer. Yeah. Mental multiplication is where you learn a process that you can use in your head yes. to solve multiplication problems. Okay. Okay. And to do this number ninja method, we're going to be using a special process based on three simple steps that I'm going to teach you to use for solving every multiplication problem you come across. Okay. So let's have a quick look at this process using these three simple steps and how we apply this to solve mental multiplication problems. If we took, let's take the six times five that we had earlier. Okay. You'll see that the three steps are here. The first one is to choose a key. And the key is always going to be either the number on the left, or the number on the right, or the X in the middle. And you're going to learn how to choose the key. It's nice to know that the key is always there in front of you. It's one of those three things to choose from. The number on the left, the number on the right, or the X in the middle. And when you've learned how to choose the right key, you'll be able to do that first step. The second step, once you've chosen the key, is the key itself will have a picture associated with it. Okay. Yes. So, so for example, when we come to do, let's say, the five here, there's a specific picture that the five relates to. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. don't, don't worry about what picture that is, but there is a picture. I'll just do a little box there to represent whatever that picture might be. In fact, let's put a question mark in it. There you go, there's our mystery picture, and it's always going to be the same picture for number five. So whenever you choose five as a key, it'll be the same picture that we use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you've learned how to link those pictures to the numbers, you'll be doing step two. Mm -hmm. And step three is each one of those pictures has a special story that you can play, like a, a very small, like a movie. So let's draw a little play button there. Each picture you play in a particular way and it leads you to an answer. Oh. So, so in this case, 
If we've chosen the picture that relates to the five, we then need to play the story of that picture. And as we play the story, we look at our problem here and say, well, there's a six involved in this problem. So let's play the story around the number six. And as we do that, the right answer will pop out. Okay. Yeah. That's how the process works and you're going to be learning to do that next.